MGF Custom Slash Reviews. What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I'm doing my long anticipated LEGO Iron Man 3 custom minifigure showcase video. And Iron Man 3 is uh, coming out tonight at midnight here in the United States, and I know you Europeans have already gotten to see it, but if you'd be so kind to just leave the comment section spoiler free, that'd be very much appreciated. But to celebrate Iron Man 3's launch tonight, uh, I have pretty much assembled an entire wave of new custom minifigures that I've been working on over the past few months. I mean, I've been giving you guys hints at what I've been working on over the past few months on Flickr and Twitter and everything but finally here is the official showcase video to top everything off and to celebrate I've got my own uh, upgraded Tony Stark minifigure he's got the headset we've been seeing in the trailers I've got the brand new Iron Man suit the Mark 42 and then you can see I also have Rhodey's new suit the uh, Iron Patriot suit the Mark 40 hyper velocity suit the shotgun or nicknamed the shotgun and then of course the uh, Mark 39 which is uh, the suborbital suit which is uh, nicknamed the Gemini the Mark 17 which is the artillery level suit nicknamed the Heartbreaker my own upgraded Mandarin he has like the rings on his hands and his own brand new cape that I made for him with the help of Cape Madness and uh, then you can see I also have the Hulkbuster suit which is actually the Igor suit in Iron Man 3. I'm just really stuck on calling it the Hulkbuster because that's uh, what I commissioned Lego Holic to build. We pretty much have been calling it uh, the Hulkbuster back and forth. But anyway, this is the Mark 38 heavy lifting suit, nicknamed the Igor, and without Lego Holic's help, this would not have been possible. This is completely built out of his own parts, and all I did was simply paint on the head details to uh, pretty much top it off. And honestly, it's really just his work that I've included in this showcase video to really make make sure that this video is exciting and comes full circle to hype you guys up for this film and inspire to uh, see what you what you guys might uh, make after you see the film. So that's pretty much the reason that I decided to outsource a bit of work and have a Legoholic step in to make this piece of art that I'm going to show you in just a few minutes. So stick around and uh, check out all the new Iron Man 3 minifigures. And I'm really looking forward to the film. All the trailers and clips that we've been seeing have been great. I've kept up with every single one of them, every single trailer, clip, and interview. And uh, from Iron Man, you know, Tony's house being destroyed, and uh, to the Iron Legion, this is going to be an amazing film, and hopefully not the last Iron Man film. But from what I've heard, if it is the last Iron Man film, I'm okay with it. So I'm going to stop talking and show you these awesome minifigures. My Tony Stark is literally the exact same one that we received in the Malibu Mansion attack, and I must commend Lego on this figure, because it is definitely a really great one. But you can see I did paint on the headset that we've been seeing in various trailers and clips. Uh, this is the headset that we've seen him wearing in his workshop, and pretty much all I did was paint on the headset on the head. You can see I did use a little bit of the hair to paint on a silver part of it, but the rest of the segments are not actually connected, but once you put the hair piece on, they look like they are. So really there's no harm in not actually like, connecting each little portion with a, with a black strip or anything. So that's really all I did for my uh, Tony Sark here, but it definitely serves the purpose of looking like the headset and looks great. So there you go. The brand new Mark 42 suit, I have to say, is definitely better than the one we received in the new Iron Man 3 sets, as, is, as mine is the accurate color and just overall looks better, because obviously it's a custom painted figure and uh, the Lego group can't go as far as what I did here. But you can see it definitely turned out great. The torso armor, like the majority of these Iron Man 3 minifigures, is um, produced by Amazing Armory, and I pretty much painted on all the details, all the tan, all the black outlining, everything you see, and it looks great. I pretty much went as accurate as possible possible to the reference pictures I was using and then the same can be said for the legs. The legs also are accurate and do look very nice and they are just like all my minifigures they are completely posable so uh, that is definitely beneficial and you can see the detail on the arms is uh, different than uh, the majority of my Iron Man custom minifigures and you can see the back of the helmet is actually outlined so all the three-dimensional aspects of the helmet that was obviously produced by Lego themselves does uh, pretty much I pretty much served it justice by outlining all of it and you can see that the visor of course still does flip up and inside there I have Tony 
and I actually painted his neck red to really make him look like he's more inside the suit, and it really worked out. Inside the Mark 42's face mask, I do actually have a custom painted HUD, and you can see it just adds that much more detail to the overall concept of this figure. And when the Mark 42 suit was revealed at first at Comic Con last year, I was a little bit skeptical about it, but uh, now that we've seen it in the actual film and all the trailers and clips, I was just absolutely blown away by how amazing it is, and just overall, I'm just really happy with the new suit, and I'm really happy that I was able to recreate it the way I have here. The brand new Iron Patriot suit introduced Iron Man 3 is just really cool. I was really excited when I first saw it in the trailers. I just love the color scheme of it with the red, silver, and blue. Just really, really awesome. And you can see that this is obviously Rhodey's new suit. And the amazing armory armor that I then painted the solid dark blue color onto has all kinds of details like the actual like star shape painted around the red arc reactor. The uh, a red arc reactor actually has some white on it to kind of simulate a glowing effect. And then you can see the star like on his wrist and all the silver and and just all the details that I've uh, implemented onto this figure really turned out great and just really make for the perfect Iron Patriot minifigure. And the gun, I don't actually know the name of it, but the gun is made up of two Brick Forge accessories, modified Brick Forge accessories, and then of course I painted them to make them look accurate to the brand new Iron Patriot suit. And it definitely turned out fantastic. And you can see there's a look at all the details on the back of the figure, and uh, there are a lot of detail, there is a lot of detail on the back of the legs, of course, and then you can see like the uh, diamond shapes on the sides of the legs. And of course, just like all the Iron Patriot, uh, he is, in fact, he does have deposable legs. And then you can see, here's a good look at the helmet. The helmet is uh, pretty much as accurate as possible. It has the little black lines running through the visor or the face mask. And uh, just like the arc reactor, the solid color for the eyes is red, but then I painted on white to simulate a red glowing effect. And the face mask, of course, can still flip up. And uh, trying to get it, come on, come on, buddy. <laughs> kind of hard to access when you have the gun on the right side, but it does come up really easily. The, it's not like it's stuck to it or anything, it's just kind of hard to get to without uh, fiddling with the gun too much. But you can see that inside there, there is Rhodey in there, and uh, really happy Lego made a Rhodey face because honestly, I really feel like it tops off this figure because if I just had a black head, black head under there or like a Mace Windu head, it probably would have looked a lot worse. But just like the Mark 42, he does have the same exact paint custom painted in HUD and uh, just really makes for a fantastic Iron Patriot custom minifigure and just one of my favorite minifigures I've ever made. So uh, there's one last 360 view of my Iron Patriot. So there he is. Definitely a really amazing suit and I'm really looking forward to how it's going to be utilized in Iron Man 3. The Mandarin is just like Tony and uh, the Heartbreaker suit. It's an official Lego minifig, but with my own upgrades. And these upgrades being a lot of uh, detail in the hands, I actually painted five rings onto either hand and uh, they look really great. They actually have a little bit of color to them, believe it or not. Uh, like one ring is blue, the other is red, and like one of them I, I think is actually has a little bit of a black in it. Um, and there are the uh, there are five rings on either hand, like I said. So you can see that the rings uh, do continue on the other hand, of course. And he does have a um, Brook Arms pistol. I forgot the exact name of the pistol, but uh, he had a pistol in one of the scenes in the trailer, so I figured I'd give him that as kind of a weapon so he wouldn't be completely unarmed. But then you can see I painted on these sunglasses because in some recent trailers we saw him with sunglasses, so I figured I'd go ahead and paint those on mine. Definitely makes him look like a more menacing villain, so a pretty cool touch there. And those are and those black glasses there are actually outlined in uh, gold, so that's pretty cool. And then you can see um, on his forehead, I actually right there painted on the mole that uh, Ben Kingsley has on the uh, on his forehead. And then you can see the hairpiece is actually kind of like a uh, Chinese hairpiece, I guess, that we saw in uh, one of the Lego minifigure series. So I decided I'd put that on mine because it looks more accurate to uh, the Mandarin's hairstyle. So if we go ahead and remove the hairpiece and uh, the head, along with the uh, Brickforge beard, and by the way, this Brickforge beard is actually a Brickforge uh, dwarven beard with uh, some gray highlights in it, so pretty cool there. But then you can see the uh, cape is really cool as it has uh, some like gold sections here with some black detail and uh, just really cool because it's actually uh, made by Cape Madness and uh, Cape Madness is uh, almost like MMCB Cape so if you guys ever heard of him but uh, just really awesome makes the Mandarin look that much more accurate because the a definitely a big uh, some of the Mandarin's outfit is the robe that he wears and you can see that was portrayed with a uh, one Cape Madness cape and then um, 
this like uh, Cape Mantis headdress that I painted a little bit of a uh, gold detailing onto and uh, just really cool the torso and legs were not changed at all because honestly uh, the Lego group did a fantastic job with all the detail on those so there was really no reason to modify those but I pretty much added all I think was necessary and uh, really just to make the Mandarin look that much better and uh, I'm really looking forward to this villain in the Iron Man 3 I heard that uh, I might actually be, be disappointed by the character from a few people but who knows what's gonna happen with the Mandarin or what he's about I know he's like the leader of the 10 rings but just seems like he'll be a really cool villain so that's just another reason I'm looking forward to Iron Man 3 and especially because he's portrayed by Ben Kingsley so there is the uh, my take on the Mandarin Starting off with the first of our Iron Legion minifigures, I have the Heartbreaker suit, and pretty much the Heartbreaker is like the face of the Iron Legion right now. When you think of the Heartbreaker, when you think of the Iron Legion, you kind of think of the Heartbreaker suit, because like you remember in the trailer, the second trailer, when the Heartbreaker flies in and then the rest follow him, he's pretty much like the, it, it's almost like he's the leader of the Iron Legion, it seems like from the trailer. But as you can see, this is pretty much the same exact Heartbreaker suit that we received in the Ultimate Showdown in Iron Man 3 set, but pretty much what I did was paint on all the details on the arms to really make the suit look a lot better. And the same can be said for the helmet, as I painted on all the outlining and I also painted on the silver band wrapping around the back there and I really love this detail here with the uh, squares and then you can see the front of the face mask does uh, actually have I changed the overall color of the arc reactor I changed it to light blue here and then the eyes are also they also have the same light blue color and then you can see the uh, black right up here which has some gray lines running through it and that's symmetrically on both sides and just really a clean paint job on the face mask that I'm very satisfied with and the silver does continue all the way to this side here and um, then there is a little bit of black on the top of the helmet there. And then you can see on the bottom of the legs here, this little gunmetal like uh, dash you can see right here and here that is actually painted on. It's not included with the actual figure. So really all this is is just a uh, Lego official Iron, uh, Iron Man Heartbreaker suit that I then pretty much upgraded. And the reason I'm showing it to you again is because I did actually add a little bit more silver on the cheeks. And when I say show it to you again, to those of you who don't know, I have actually showcased this custom minifigure separately before. But there is my take on the Heartbreaker suit. Pretty much just a Lego official figure that I then added my own upgrades to. The suborbital suit, aka the Gemini, is uh, really cool with this white and gray color scheme. It just really comes together very nicely. And with all the detail I've added on, it's just really an immense figure. And uh, that detail includes various outlined uh, sections on the legs, the arms everywhere. And then you can see all kinds of gray armor plating all over the entire figure. All that detail on the arms, the side of the legs there. Uh, you can see there is a little bit of detail on the back of the legs as well. I have these sculpted on boosters which have their own amount of detail and accuracy. And then you can see that they do actually have uh, two blue markings to represent kind of a flight mode if you will. Kind of like, you know, they're activated. And then you can see uh, the gold on the face mask the face mask is actually I took uh, a standard Lego Iron Man face mask that was already gold and I then proceeded to pretty much paint on my own gold so that it matched with the gold going over the fa face mask and uh, over the top of the helmet there and uh, there is a little bit of outlining right here and here and then you can see the gold does go like I said over the top of the helmet and uh, it stops right around the circular gray area back here the entire back of the helmet is completely outlined and you can see it does have a uh, black kind of like um I don't really know what you call it, but you can see it does have that little black section right here and uh, just a really cool design. And then you can see that there is a little bit of detail on the belt. You can see that uh, there is some gold and just some different shapes there with black and gray. And uh, the same could be said for the front of the belt. And the uh, torso armor is actually a breakthrough armory torso piece and not amazing armory. So pretty much it came in a light blue or light gray color that I then painted white and then pretty much everything you see onto it. And then you can see uh, to do that, I, there is a little bit of a section right here where the armor kind of cuts off and to make sure that, that didn't seem empty I added a little bit of black detailing right here to uh, go right up into that area so it doesn't like I said look empty and then you can see the legs are really cool because when you're freehanding a custom making something look exactly the same on two sides is something you don't really run into a lot so I'm really happy that I made it look as it does because like I said, when you're freehanding something, it's kind of hard to make something look symmetrical. So I think it definitely turned out really great. And with all that gray outlined in black and the gold in the middle there, just really makes for the uh, perfect Gemini legs and looks fantastic. And uh, then you can see the detail on the sides there, got a little bit of gray armor plating. And of course, the legs are poseable. 
And uh, one little effect that I really like about the legs is the uh, gray black striping right here. Definitely tops off the legs. And uh, yeah, so then you see this one does actually have white hands. I was going to go with gray, but I decided not to. Honestly, I think uh, white looks better. And just like the rest of the Iron Man suits, aside from Iron Patriot and the shotgun suit, it does have the same light blue color eyes and arc reactor. So honestly, I think that pretty much I made it clear that everything on this suit is completely painted by me. I pretty much start off with a basic color, a raw color that I then paint on a solid color like the white for this instance, and then all the detail all over the entire minifigure. So definitely. Definitely a really great custom on my part and one to remember because it's just really awesome. So there is my take on the Gemini suit. The Mark 40 aka the shotgun suit or hyper velocity is uh, definitely really cool in terms of its overall design concept because it's different from any other Iron Man suit. These Iron Legion suits are just really cool and I've definitely represented the uh, interesting design of this thing on my custom minifigure here and you can see that uh, that pretty much can be said for the amazing armory torso armor that I then painted a solid color of dark gray and you can see that uh, the white arc reactor is actually square and pretty much what I had to do is I had to put a little bit of clay in the center of this thing so that I got a kind of a flat surface to go ahead and paint on that white uh, square arc reactor so definitely turned out really great and you can see all the different little details all the different gunmetal armor plating all over this figure definitely looks really great and it is all of course outlined in black to really emphasize all this detail and then you can see the arms do have uh, they do have their own share of uh, little black lines to kind of make it look more like an Iron Man suit of course and then you can see the back of the armor is unfortunately a little bit inaccurate but that is because uh, reference pictures of the back of this suit did not exist until just recently and you can see that there is actually a big knob on the back of this um, torso armor and that is just unfortunately the design of the amazing armory uh, torso armor and unfortunately I don't think it would look that great if I were to just sand the entire thing off so I decided to just leave it on there and who knows maybe I could attach something to it later on but for now it's just kind of there and it's alright it, I mean honestly this is the best Iron Man armor you're going to find uh, to paint onto so I'm not going to complain but you can see that the helmet is uh, very interesting because the face mask is kind of like a face mask on top of a face mask it's just really cool and you can see that I did paint that on properly and with a few extra layers of paint come up cover up the uh, facial slit right there it definitely turned out really great and looks just like the Mark 40 and the eyes as you can see right there are actually not just your average square eyes they are actually a little bit more triangular a little bit more um, pointy than your average Iron Man eyes and uh, that was totally intentional and turned out great you can see a little bit of gray up here to emphasize those uh, unique eyes and then you can see a little bit of black detail right here on the top and of course the entire back of the helmet is completely uh, outlined in black and pretty much everything you see here is completely painted by me and then you can see the um, legs do have their own share of detail as uh, they are they pretty much have all kinds of different uh, armor platings to them all kinds of different uh, gunmetal shapes the side of the legs do actually have uh, a pretty good amount of accuracy to them you can see that uh, they do have a little bit of a uh, gunmetal armor plating you can see uh, the sides of the legs are actually the exact same on both sides and that was uh, pretty much completely intentional of course and definitely turned out looking great and of course the legs are completely posable just like all these Iron Man minifigures which I've obviously been obviously been making clear but yeah, there is the Iron Man Mark 40 Hyper Velocity Suit, a.k.a. the Shotgun, which everyone's going to be calling it from now on, of course. But, yeah, there he is. Definitely a really awesome suit. And finally, to top off all these custom Iron Man 3 minifigures, we have the Mark 38 Heavy Lifting Suit, a.k.a. the Igor Suit. And this was built by uh, Tyler Kleitz, or he likes to call himself Legoholic, because he is quite a Legoholic with all of his talents with uh, building and designing different Lego models and he does commission these so if you might want to have him build something for yourself be sure to contact him through his email link to his Flickr will be in the description below because I decided I, I was working so hard on all those custom minifigures you just saw uh, for this showcase I decided I'd outsource a bit of work and have him build the uh, Mark 38 or the Igor suit here and my god did he succeed this thing is phenomenal it is to minifig scale it has all kinds of points of articulation and it is just completely accurate and absolutely beautiful and what I did do though is uh, obviously when you're building something this small and a minifig scale it's kind of hard to build a head that actually has uh, eyes and a mouth and different details on it by just being totally purist about it so I decided I'd tell him that you know I can go ahead if you just put on a normal head with uh, just some basic pieces I can go ahead and
and paint on the eyes and mouth and just whatever else to make this look right. And that's exactly what I did. And uh, you can see it turned out really great. I actually painted on the eyes, mouth, and the blue on the top of the head. And uh, without it, this probably wouldn't have been 100%. But either way, he did an amazing job. He even has the arc reactor in there. He's got all these different uh, pieces to represent the accuracy of this suit. And uh, you can see the hands here, which are represented by hooks, hook pieces, and uh, just really fantastic. So let's go ahead and go over all the points of articulation that God knows how he managed to uh, fit into this thing. This thing is, once again, amazing. So the first point of articulation that we're going to go over is the arms. And the arms have the exact same points of articulation, so I don't really have to go over this arm. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and use this arm to pretty much show you. And you can see that it is just really fantastic. I don't know how he... I mean, obviously, I know because I was able to take a look at the design now that I physically have it in person. But, I mean, it's just really amazing how, uh, how ingenious he is about uh, the models that he designs because this arm can pretty much go around 360 degrees, and it does have a good amount of articulation in uh, the elbow which is really fantastic and uh, just amazing so really great art articulation in the arms but now let's go ahead and take a look at the legs and I don't think I can stress it enough, but Tyler was really ingenious with the pieces he decided to use to make this thing as poseable as it is. And uh, that is really represented in the legs here. And uh, you can see the legs do uh, actually go outward, which is uh, pretty insane. When he showed me the pictures of what he had built, I didn't actually think that that was gonna be, that was gonna be possible. And I'm really surprised by what he was capable of doing with uh, such a small model. But you can see the uh, actual legs do pose very nicely with all the articulation that he included. And uh, you can see the articulation is actually included in the knees as well which is uh, pretty fantastic and uh, once again just a very very ingenious design and uh, definitely makes for easily the best uh, Hulkbuster or Mark 38 Igor suit that we have seen in the community as of right now and then you can see uh, the head does also have its share of posability as it can turn and pretty much it is attached uh, by a single uh, hook piece inside of the uh, torso piece right there and uh, the overall design of this thing, like the bulk that he has on it, and just the accuracy, it's just phenomenal. Like, this is just amazing. So huge, huge thanks to Tyler for uh, building this for me. Really helped out. And honestly, I wouldn't have been able to finish everything in time if uh, I hadn't have him uh, outsource some work for me. So huge thanks to uh, Tyler Legoholic. Once again, link to his Flickr photo stream will be in the description below. So once again, Tyler, if you're watching this, huge thanks to you. Man. MGF Custom Flash Reviews. Tony, the presser outside. Alright guys, so that about does it for my LEGO Iron Man 3 launch showcase and I uh, I really did work very hard on each and every single one of these minifigures. Each and every single one is a huge project. I have to gather reference pictures and it's just overall a long process to make each one of these figures. So I would really appreciate it if you would just hit that like button to show your support and I'd love to hear your opinion in the comment section below as like I said, I worked very hard on all of these minifigures figures to uh, complete them in time for this showcase video and just in time for Iron Man 3's launch over here in the United States in general. So once again, I'd appreciate a like and comment if you could. But uh, these minifigures are unfortunately not for sale unless told otherwise because these minifigures, like I just said, are an extreme project each. I mean, they're just really hard. I wouldn't, I mean, like I, I'm, I'm experienced in what I do, but each and every single one of these takes a long time. These are, like I said, each and every single one of these figures is quite a long project and isn't something I can do within a day or even sometimes a week. And I'm only one person with two hands, so I really do apologize to those of you who would like to buy these custom minifigures. But unfortunately, it's just not physically possible for me. But, um... To those of you uh, Europeans out there who have already seen the film, I will not be reading the comments, uh, at least until I've seen it tonight. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. But um, yeah, you might have noticed in the background of this video, I do have the Hall of Armor. I, you can't even see my hand. The Hall of Armor. And the Hall of Armor is complete. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say it's complete. It's a, roughly about 90% complete. I still have to finish up on the Mark III and Mark VI. But other than that, uh, they, the Hall of Armor is pretty much complete. And uh, thanks to some collaboration 
and work with JPO97 Studios that was made possible. Link to his channel will also be in the description below alongside Legoholics. And huge thanks to him for helping me with the uh, Mark 38 heavy lifting suit, the Igor. I mean, I would not have been able to make that myself. He designed it. He supplied his own parts. Literally all I did, I've already stated this, but all I did was just paint the head. And once again, I couldn't thank Tyler enough for making the Igor possible. So, um, I think I'm going to end it off at that. And uh, I'm going to go see Iron Man 3. And I've been waiting for this day for quite a while because Iron Man 3 looks amazing. So, without further ado, I'll see you guys later. Bye! And then you can see that there is... Oh my god, I don't even have the right hairpiece on him. Where is it? Gosh damn it. So I'm really happy that I was able to recreate it. Gosh damn it. It's just the white and gray really kind of come... The suborbital spoot? Spoot? Really? more upgrades than just Tony Stark, of course. He has a lot of uh, different, 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 yeah. God knows what else. I mean, really? God knows what else? That, that was appropriate. You need Cape, Ma Cape Madness Cape from Cape Madness. Gosh, damn it! Is actually um, a Brick Forge. No, it's not Brick Forge, damn it! Knees are, in fact, posable and uh, just. Again, he was really. Thanks, Lamp. Appreciate it.